All right, hi guys, we are doing 9-1 in this video. I will tell you guys, we already did 9-1 in class. This was the block day before we went to shelter in place. So if you guys take a look at your note packet for chapter nine that I passed out before shelter in place and you've already done these notes, then you don't need to watch this video. Also, the homework on Big Ideas on the website for 9-1 matches the bookwork that you guys did that block day, that night after the block day. So if you guys just take those problems from the paper that you guys did your homework on and just enter the answers into the Big Ideas website, you should be good to go. All right, so that is what I'm going to start out with. You don't need to watch this video if you've done 9-1 already. Okay, for those of you guys who might not have been in class for 9-1, uh, we are getting into trig. So this is a really, really important unit for pre-calculus next year. And then when you move into calculus, you're also going to use a lot of these concepts. So being really, really familiar with this stuff is really important. 9-1 is all about right triangle trig. So hopefully it's mostly a review of geometry for you guys, um, but we're going to do some examples. So first core concept is how we define sine, um, cosine, and tangent. These are three trig functions you guys should be really, really familiar with. So the sine of an angle, we've got theta over here on this triangle. We always define that as the side length opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. You guys might remember this from geometry as so Katoa, all right, where this is sine opposite hypotenuse right, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, okay? So Katoa. We're going to introduce three other trig functions today. So those three are secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Those are a little bit new. The way that we're going to find this as is as follows. The secant, right, which I'm going to write actually is the secant of theta, is the reciprocal of cosine. The cosecant, which we write as CSC, is the reciprocal of sine. And the cotangent, this one's the easiest to remember, is the reciprocal of tangent. So all we do to get cosecant is we flip tangent. If tangent is opposite over adjacent, cosecant is, sorry, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So when they're reciprocals of one another, if tangent is opposite over adjacent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, right? Similarly, if secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, the reciprocal of secant is cosine. Cosine is then adjacent over hypotenuse. We just flip the fractions in order to get those other three trig functions, which you might not be familiar with. All right, so we're moving on. Go into the next uh, example here. So evaluate the six trig functions of this angle theta. Now remember, theta, where it is, is really important. Theta is up here in the upper left-hand corner of that triangle. Now, um, before we can do anything, we do need that third side. We need the hypotenuse. There are two ways you can do this. You can use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared. Right, always a good way to go. Alternatively, if you guys remember those Pythagorean triples from geometry, 5, 12, 13 is a common Pythagorean triple, all right? Those Pythagorean triples, if you remember them, are going to make your life a lot easier for trig. Okay, we know that the third side is 13 here. However you guys find it, we want all of those trig functions. So this is how I'm going to lay them out. The sine of theta, remember sine is always opposite over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13 Cosine of theta is always adjacent over hypotenuse, right? The side adjacent to theta is the side right next to it. That would be 5. And then tangent is always the side opposite over adjacent. Okay, next, I'm going to line up the other three. So cosecant, remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So sine is 12 over 13. Cosecant is 13 over 12. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So we're just going to flip the fraction. If cosine is 5 over 13, secant is 13 over 5. And then last one, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. All right, here's how I remember this. If you think of them in terms of pairs, like sine and cosecant are a pair. Cosine and secant are a pair. Between the pairs, only one is ever going to start with a C. So sine doesn't start with a C, which means its pair, cosecant, has to. Cosine starts with a C, so secant, its pair, cannot. 
Tangent doesn't start with a C, which means it's pair cotangent has to start with a C. That's how I remember. It's really up to you guys, however you'd like to. Um, just find a way to remember how to um, relate cosine and secant sine and cosecant tangent and cotangent. All right, so example number two in a right triangle, theta uh, is an acute angle, and the sine of theta is 4 over 7. We want to find all the other trig functions. So first thing I'm going to do, I always draw a triangle. Drawing a triangle is super important. If I were to give you guys a test on this unit, you'd be drawing diagrams and getting points for that. Okay, pick an angle. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to call that one theta. You could have picked this corner up here as well. I just always like the bottom one. Okay, so if that angle is theta, what side lengths make the sine of theta 4 over 7? Well, sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is 7. Hypotenuse always opposite the 90 degree angle. And then the side opposite is 4. All right, we do need that third side length. And this one is not a Pythagorean triple. So I need to find... Okay, not a Pythagorean triple, so I need to find that last side length. So we're going to do that with Pythagorean theorem. I know that this side length is equal to the square root of 7 squared minus 4 squared. That is going to be 49 minus 16. That is going to be the square root of 33. So I'm going to mark that here. Our third length, side length is the square root of 33. All right. The sine of theta, we were given, that is already 4 over 7, no problem there. I'm just going to rewrite it. I think it's going to be easier when I go to do the cosecant. Okay, cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse, so root 33 over 7. And then tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So 4 over root 33. Now, you cannot leave your answer like that. We need to rationalize. You cannot have square roots in the denominator. So the final answer for tangent of theta is 4 root 33 over 33. Okay, reciprocal of sine is cosecant. That is 7 over 4. Just flip the fraction. All right, reciprocal of cosine is secant. So we're going to flip the fraction, but the problem is we cannot have a square root in the denominator, which means we're going to rationalize. And then the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Now, I'd go here. Flip that fraction. Don't flip the one we got for the final answer of tangent. And then we don't have to worry about rationalizing anything. Root 33 over 4. There are our six trig functions. Okay? I'm going to skip the for you to do's here. You guys are going to go back. You can check the answers online. We're going to move on to the next chord concept. So this table of values gives us really, really specific values for sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent for special angles. So we're looking at those 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. Now remember, there were relationships that were really important with 30, 60, 90 degree triangles and 45, 45, 90 degree triangles when you guys were in geometry. So just a reminder, 30, 60, 90, if the short side is x, then the longer side is x root 3, and then the hypotenuse is always 2 times the short side. For a 45, 45, 90, this one's a little bit easier. The two side lengths are the same, so they're both x, and then the hypotenuse is going to be the side length times the square root of 2. Now, this table gives us really nice values for all of those six trig functions. So, think about those six trig functions. Which one deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine does. So, the cosine of 30 is always equal to x over 8 here. Okay, so what we can do to solve for x is just multiply both sides by 8. Now, the cosine of 30, if you look at that table right above on your notes, we are told that the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. So this is 8 times root 3 over 2, which is going to simplify to 4 root 3. Okay, that is one option. That's the trig option. If we're going with um, the, the properties of trigonometry, that's maybe how we would use it. But here's another thing. Um, I could think of it like this instead. This is a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. We know relationships between 30, 60, and 90. I'm going to redraw this really fast. This is the 30 degree angle. Okay, this is the short side. So we always know in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, the short side is always the hypotenuse divided by 2. The short side here is 4. Now, this is the longer side. X is the longer side. That's what we're solving for. The longer side of a 30, 60, 90 is always the short side times the square root of 3. That's another way that we could go with the properties of 30, 60, 90. One obviously has a little bit less work than the other. doesn't matter how you get there as long as you can get there. 
Okay, example four. We are going to be solving a triangle. So when we're asked to solve a triangle, you're being asked to find every single thing about that triangle, all three side lengths and all three angles. So what do we got? We got this triangle ABC. We need to find two side lengths and one more angle. So it doesn't matter where you start. Sometimes I think that's going to be the easiest right now for us is finding this angle. I'll call it theta. Um, we could also call it angle B just because that's the way that the triangle is oriented. Okay. Angle B... We know that the triangle has 180 degrees total. So angle B is just 180 minus 90 for this 90 degree angle, minus 28 for that second angle that we've got. All right, the measure of angle B then, if we do that in a calculator, is 62 degrees. Okay, so we've got all three angles, 90, 28, and 62. We just need to find side lengths A and C. Different ways that you guys can choose to do this. I'm going to do it this way. Um, I'm going to look at angle 28, and I have side length B. So side length B in relation to 28 degrees is the side adjacent. And then um, I'm going to solve for C. So C is the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, um, that is going to be cosine. So the cosine of 28 degrees is equal to 15 over C. And then we can solve for C. C is equal to 15 divided by the cosine of 28 degrees. That is something you're just going to type into your calculator. We should be getting something like 16.9885. Please make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, not in radian. That'll throw you off a little bit on your answer there. Okay, other ways that you could have solved for C, that's one of the options. All right, similarly for A, A is the side opposite 28. So opposite, and then I'm going to use 15B, we have adjacent. So that is going to be set up using tangent. The tangent of 28 degrees is equal to A over 15. A is equal to 15 times the tangent of 28. Again, you're just going to type that into your calculator. You should get something like that, 7.9756. We could have also used Pythagorean theorem to find side length A since we had B and C. All right, those are options, but we've got all three side lengths now and all three angles, so we're good to go. We've solved the triangle. You guys are going to do the for you to do's. Um, check your answers on the answer key that's posted online. We're going to go to the back and finish up these last couple of examples. So example five, we are near a canyon. We're standing at point A. We measure an angle of 90 degrees between B and C, so we've got that 90 degree triangle going on, and we want to know... Um, if the distance between A and B is about two miles, how wide is the canyon between A and C? So we are solving for this side length X here. Now, we have 76 degrees. We have two miles. In relationship to the 76 degree angle, two is the side adjacent. And we are solving for the side opposite. So if we've got an angle a side adjacent and opposite, we're using tangent here. So the tangent of 76 degrees is equal to always opposite over adjacent. So x is equal to 2 times the tangent of 76. Type that into your calculator. We get 8.02 miles. That is how wide the canyon is. All right, very last example requires a really important concept. It's the difference between an angle of depression and an angle of elevation. So this is something that is going to be hard for me to explain to you guys on a video. But if you stick your arm out and it's parallel to the ground, and then you raise your arm up to the sun, the angle that your arm traveled is what we would call the angle of elevation. So it's from the horizontal moving up. If we're given an angle of depression, if you hold your arm out again, and this time you move your arm down, that would be the angle of depression. The angle that our arm just moved from the horizontal down is what we call the angle of depression. They're very different. Um, they end up being the same due to the rule of geometry was it alternate interior angles? Um, but the way that we have to construct a diagram becomes really important that we're marking the correct angle. All right, so let's give this a try. Last example, we've got a parasailer attached to a boat with a rope that is 72 feet long. So we've got our boat, we've got a rope, and there's a person up here parasailing. 
The rope is 72 feet long. The angle of elevation from the boat to the parasailer is 28 degrees. So if we draw a perpendicular, the angle of elevation moving up to the parasailer is 28 degrees. And we want to find how high the parasailer is above the boat. So we're looking for this. Now, in relationship to that 28 degree angle, what do we have? Well, we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse here. So what trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? That is sine. So the sine of 28 degrees is equal to h over 72. That means h is 72 times the sine of 28. Type that into your calculator. Calculate, we get something like 33.80 feet. That is how high above the ground he is. All right. Um, homework again, you guys have done already, probably on a piece of paper, somewhere in your binder. Take a look at those answers, just put them online on the big ideas assignment, and you should be good to go for 9-1.